Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God and I am so grateful for sharing our thoughts through words of encouragement and through Scripture guided by the Holy Spirit on this December the 20th, 2022. Over the next few days, we are going to talk about decision makers. That's right. We're going to talk about decision makers. We're going to talk to those who make decisions and the things that we need to put as priority as making decisions on. And so decision makers, what's going to drive the decision that you make? At this time of year, many are going over their year. We are coming to a close of 2022. I believe that there is so much to be done because God is still in charge. And so before you count out, before you say, hey, you know what, I am done with this year, Take into an account there is nothing that God can do. God can do all things if we allow him to. And we must remember it is all according to his time, all according to his purpose, all according to his plans. And so listen, before you make the next decision, take the time to talk to God. But before we jump into our word for today, I would like to invite you to visit us on our website at www.angelferguson-ministries.com. Via the website, you will find information for our radio and television ministry schedule, the School of Mentoring and Ministering programs that we offer, also access to Hope and Truth magazine. And it is never too late to subscribe for our free digital copies of Hope and Truth magazine. That's right, all digital copies of Hope and Truth magazine are absolutely free. All you have to do is email us here at the balance of life one at yahoo.com. Once again, our email address is the balance of life one at yahoo.com. Make your request to subscribe to our free digital copies of Hope and Truth magazine. Now, what we will do when you subscribe to Hope and Truth magazine's free digital copies, we will send you a link via issue.com in which you can view and download issues of Hope and Truth magazine. As well, we place them on our website so that you can have full access to our monthly digital copies of Hope and Truth magazine. Or if you would like to make a purchase, you can do so via Amazon or by contacting us directly for your subscriptions. Once again, our email address is thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. All right, so there are so many decisions to make. As we look over the progress of our year, some things we might have done did not pan out totally, or they might still be in uh, the gestation period, I'm going to say. Oftentimes we plant seeds, and sometimes we look for a quick turnaround. Many things were done at the beginning of the physical year, but it takes time for that uh, particular seed to take root, to mature, and then begin to grow for a proper harvest. So don't pluck the seed too fast. Uh, also, uh, make sure that the timing is right. Some things that were planted whether it was in our personal lives, business, or ministry, the harvest time isn't for this particular year. The harvest time could be for next year. Remember when it comes to any area, ministry, business, and personal, it really takes time. I believe uh, it takes about three years, three to five years before you begin to see a real uh, profit 
I'm going to say it that way or return on your investment uh, before you really begin to see any growth or maturing in those areas. So don't give up. Don't think that the things that you did throughout this year that they were useless. What God wants to see from us and it is so apparent in individuals, the consumers, if you will. They want to see consistency, not a one hit wonder, maybe uh, or not periodically, but they want to see consistency. God wants to see consistency in our lives before he will release us into during other areas or to mature what we have planted remember it is God's vision anyway he gave you the desire for that business for that ministry especially most exclusively if it is connected to the kingdom of heaven if it is for the betterment of the lives of people if it is feeding the soul of the individual to come into the knowledge of Christ you know our businesses and our ministries our personal lives that is what we are called to do to do things on earth as they are in heaven and so what God wants to see first of all if we're going to be one that walks in faith not only walking in faith but are we going to move in obedience when instructed to do his will to speak his word to share his love he wants to know are we going to do that in faith and are we going to walk in obedience and let us not forget walking in humility so it might not be moving the way you think it should move. It might not grow the way you think it should have grown because you are looking for that quick turnaround. But I'm going to tell you this. Do not give up. Do not throw in the towel. I want to tell you, remain consistent in what you are doing. That's right remain consistent because in due time things are going to begin to turn around things are going to begin to grow but make sure above all that you talk to the father first that's right talk to the father first talk to God talk to God make sure that you schedule those appointments with him uh, sit into the presence of the Lord listen to what he has to say you know we might have our own ideas of the way we think things should go and when it is given to us by God when he has invited us to do something on earth for the kingdom of heaven keep in mind there is a certain way that he wants it done and so in order to find out how he wants it done we must spend some time getting godly counsel which means prayer 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 that's right spending some time in prayer spending some time talking to the Lord asking him what is his plan what is it that he wants to accomplish? How does he want you to do it? What are the instructions? What are the tools that you need to fulfill his plans on earth as it is in heaven? And when we, by faith, move in faith and become obedient to what he has spoken unto us, then we are fulfilling the scriptures where he he says one plants one waters but God gives the increase and so in your time of decision making make sure that you consult God first uh-huh don't cut something out of the business or the ministry out of frustration or out of emotional thinking. We talked about this last week. Consult God. Talk to God. And if he has not instructed you to, to change course, stay on the path that you were on. Make sure that you are perfecting where you are. 
grow under maturity take a look at the things that are weak we all have weak areas no system is perfect listen here's one thing that I have come to learn and to realize and I have to thank God for the Holy Spirit for reminding me me of this plenty of times seasons change and one method might work in one season but as I enter into a new season I might have to change methods I might have to shift some things around and I'm learning that that is okay you know what that's okay as long as I'm doing the will of God as long as I am moving and I am doing things that are pleasing in his sight when I come back, I want to share something with you from one of the books I have. You know, I absolutely love books. And for leadership, Promises for Every Day, it is a book uh, by John C. Maxwell. I'm not promoting the book. I'm not selling the book. I am sharing some content from the book. So when I come back, I'm going to share something with you. And also, just some words of encouragement once again. In all areas of our lives, we need to talk to God. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life, and I am Pastor Angel Ferguson. I thank you so very much for joining us today. Don't forget to find us on our Facebook page for The Balance of Life. Like and share our Facebook page. We go in daily to share words of encouragement through scriptures, as well as inspiration from the Holy Spirit. And we try and keep you up to date with what we're going to share on the air it's something that we're going to uh, move in as the holy spirit leads and guides us something that i really like trying to taper and to shape up what we're going to share each week on the radio and so uh, i love this new format and listen keep me in prayer because i need to stay in focused and fulfilling this new shift that we're in all right so I want to read something f to you from Leadership, Promises for Every Day. It's a daily devotional, a uh, great book for those who are in uh, any kind of leadership capacity, whether it is in business or in ministry. And I think it's also in our personal lives. It says, Meeting a God-Sized Challenge. And it happened when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things that they were very disheartened in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was done by our God. That's Nehemiah 6 and 16. Commitment comes before anything else in a leader's life because Nehemiah had it and drew it out of others the people finished the wall in 53 days despite much adversity so decision makers if you are going to complete what God has called you to do you must learn to work during adversity you must begin to focus on the vision, stay in tune with God, and work through trials and tribulations, hiccups, snags, snares, hindrances. Work through those things. Do not give up, but continue to move forward. And so Nehemiah is a great example. I love the teaching of Nehemiah and his leadership skills. And so in your spare time, if you are one who are in a leadership skill, spend some time in the book of Nehemiah and you will become amazed as the Holy Spirit reveals unto you his leadership skills, how he delegated to individuals according to their ability to do a job. That is another area where we're going to talk about decision makers. If you are one who have a team and you need to delegate responsibilities, make sure that it is according to their ability to do the job. All right. 
So it says their great accomplishment so thrilled Nehemiah that he wrote, when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things, they were disheartened in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was done by our God. When we stay focused and do the will and work the way God wants us to do it, the enemy is confused. Even those who throw snags and snares and negative words and actions towards the work that you were called to do, they will be confused. Why? Because you're not focused on the negativity thrown your way. You are utilizing scripture, Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter around the fifth verse casting down those thoughts and high imaginations that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and so when those things come up against the work that you are doing yes the enemy is going to use a individual through actions through words uh, to try and hinder you to try and block you to uh, to try and discourage you to, to you know what to just say things against you against the work remember no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue every word that rises up against you in judgment thou shalt condemn that is the inheritance of the saints the servants of God that is your inheritance says the Lord and so your enemy will be confused because in spite of what he hurls your way in spite of the the negative uh, words and accusations and whatever he tries to put towards to tearing you down to stop the work that God has given you to do you remain focused and consistent he will be confused and and so that is a decision maker make a decision today that I'm going to do what God calls me to do. I'm going to follow in the admiration of the Lord. I'm going to do as he has instructed me to do. That's what I'm going to do. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every word, every tongue that, that rises up against me in judgment, that falsely accuses me, that, that says that, you know what, that's not going to work. Uh, do you not know that the enemy has individuals under his influence that will talk against, pray against the work that God has given unto you to do? He does, but who did God give the assignment to? Who did God call to do the work that you were doing? In whose hands did he bless to do that particular work? Yours. Remember that. That's why it is important to talk to God on a daily basis stay in tune with him he's going to reveal unto you so much he's going to instruct you how to move he's going to instruct you sometimes to just be quiet get to work you might not have time to stop and talk to people why because God just wants you to work do the work the vision is supposed to speak. Sometimes he just wants you to work on the vision, release the manifestations of the vision, and keep it going. That's all he wants you to do. And so we must be obedient to that. That too will confuse the enemy. And so in this three-day series, Decision Makers, we're going to cover quite a bit. Like I said, we're going to look at Nehemiah and his ability to delegate even when, listen, if you did not know how to do the job, if that wasn't your craft, you didn't get the job. And so it's important if you are a leader of an organization, whether it's business or ministry, delegate according to the ability of the individual. Another area that we're going to really hone in on is working through adversity. That's right, working through adversity. It's time to make some great decisions for your life.
life for the ministry for the business but the only way to make the right decision and I know that's a big question for many how do I know how to make the right decision listen the way to make the right decision is by consulting God and waiting for a response. Not only should you wait for a response, but once you receive the response, receive it by faith and be obedient to what he is saying unto you. So let's read a little bit further on this meeting a God sized challenge as we are releasing a new series decision makers. Leaders who complete a task possess these characteristics. So listen to these characteristics because they are absolutely wonderful. Compelling purpose. They make a great commitment to a great cause. As a decision maker, you must decide to make a great commitment because what you are doing is a great cause. It is for the kingdom of heaven. So make a decision to make a great commitment. This is nothing that you can pick up and, and drop and work periodically and think about it every now and then. No, if you are at the realm and you are the leader of an organization, the vision has been placed in you. You must make a decision to make a great commitment that means when you don't feel like it you still have to go hard feeling good feeling bad snowing outside rainy sunny whatever it may be you still have to make that commitment every single day I believe that when it comes to the vision it must be touched every single day Day. A portion of the vision must be touched every single day. Yes, take your time, get plenty of rest in between, especially take time for family and personal obligations. But there is balance in all of that. Touch a portion of the vision every day, even if that portion is simply prayer. And I say simply prayer, but prayer is the most important component of the vision. Make sure that you consult God every single day and allow him through the Holy Spirit on what portion of the vision you're supposed to touch that particular day. But the number one characteristic of a leader making decisions, being the decision maker is making sure that you are ready to make a great commitment because what you're about to take on is a great cause. Another area of making decisions is having a clear perspective. They don't let fear cloud their view of the future. And so as the leader, you cannot let fear cloud your view of the f future. That is making decisions. Fear cannot cloud your decision-making power. Being one with the authority to make decisions is just that. You have been given power and a specific authority in an area. Now, once we get over to delegation, as we speak on Nehemiah, he delegated individuals, which means he gave them some authority to do. Once you find out the ability, then you must release, delinquish, appoint, delegate, and you can't be scared about it. You cannot have fear about it. We cannot police, <laughs> and I'm using that word uh, so carefully, we can't police and hover over people that we delegate a job to. When God leads you and appoints you to t you know, delegate something to an individual, let them work. God told you to do it. And so you cannot allow fear to cloud your judgment or your view of the future. God has everything in control. And if you're going to be the leader over this thing, trust the process of God. 
trust it. Once you make a decision based off what God told you to do, then you should be at a place of peace waiting on the next set of instructions. Once again, the most important thing about being a leader and having that decision-making power is being continual in prayer. The leader prays about everything and gains God's favor. That's right. You pray about everything and you gain God's favor. So always never cease to pray. Scripture tells us to pray without ceasing. That's right. Have prayer on your mind morning, noon and night all through the day in between those meetings in between doing those assignments and and delegating and talking to people pray pray before you go pray while you're on your way and pray while you are there pray always always and you will gain God's favor why are you gaining his favor because you are putting your trust totally in him you are depending solely on God is that where our trust needs to be yes is that where we need to depend yes solely on God remember it is he that have made us and not we ourselves we are the sheep of his pasture and so listen everything we need his guidance in every area of our lives so depend solely on him in all of your decision making not not just because we're coming to the end of the year but listen every single day I need him to help me make decisions consult him and through his counsel through his knowledge his wisdom and his understanding I will make the right decisions now let me say this before we go to the last section will I make mistakes yes am I perfect no at times will I miss God absolutely but to God be the glory there is an opportunity for repentance to ask for forgiveness to ask him to to forgive us we got off track it will happen but do not beat yourself over the head do not allow that to stop you do not allow that to hinder you once you realize you have made the wrong decision repent ask God to forgive you and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to get back on the right track I'm telling you you got this you got this all right let's move to the next section courageous persistence decision makers are persistent and you are courageous because guess what what you're about to do when God tells you to do it it is not the way we would do it or the way others think we ought to do it and so the way that you're going to move when God tells you to is is unexpected and sometimes you're really going to catch yourself by surprise and say wait a minute whoa that's not even something I would do but remember his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts for his ways are as high as the heavens are above the earth and so be persistent be courageous and do what God would call you to do do it his way the the leader moves ahead despite the odds if you're facing a God-sized challenge Cultivate these characteristics to give yourself the best opportunity for success. Remember, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. That is the antidote to being 
a decision maker. I pray that what we've shared with you today has been food into your soul and a light unto your path. Be sure to tune in on tomorrow as we share more in this series on decision makers. We're going to dive in more into Nehemiah, working through adversity and learning how to delegate to those according to their ability. I love you without measure. Have a blessed day, everyone.